when strange things happen around a home, you look for answers. You look for an explanation as to what is happening. You don't necessarily jump to ghosts right away and try and find logic and reason. Because a lot of times that's where the answer lies. But not always. Unfortunately, there are many times where logic and reason really can just kind of go right out that window. <laughs> and there is something else happening. A piece of furniture that seems to plague someone when they're just trying to get a peace, peaceful night's sleep. Yeah. Two. Strange shadows, whispers, voices coming through the walls after a person gets through a very dramatic surgery. Those are two stories that we have on today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Very dramatic stories really make you think about what causes a haunting, the origins of it, and why it chooses certain people. Or maybe even leave you with more questions than answers. That's what it did for me. This is EPP bonus episode number 360 of Real Ghost Stories Online. My name's Tony Bruski. Stay with us. certain places where you sleep better than others sometimes it's literally a physical setting it's a maybe your childhood home sometimes it's maybe your bed at your own house right now sometimes it's a piece of furniture where you just lay down on that couch or that chair or whatever and you can just sleep like a baby and there's no way other way no other way to explain it other than it just is so comfortable and then there's times and places where, depending on where you sleep, it goes from being comfortable to terrifying. How so? Well, how about when you sleep in this specific spot over and over, you are plagued with some of the worst nightmares of your life, and there seems to be no rhyme or reason to it other than the piece of furniture that you are sleeping on. Why is that? What is that? Your guess is as good as mine. But it's what occurs in our next story. Take a listen. I begin by talking about my experience with bad dreams. But if you listen to the end, this is more than just nightmares. I experienced what I believe to be true paranormal activity. The nightmares merely led up to it. This is not a fiction. I am relating what happened to me. I've not always lived where I'm living now. My family moved about two years ago, but due to college, I stayed at a dorm rather than at my new house. It was only during some brief time in the summer and on some occasional trips back that I stayed at this new home. There's a guest bedroom. And though my mother was insistent that I make it my own, I never wanted to sleep there as a reminder to myself that I cannot live at home all my life. My stay at my parents' home was just temporary. I was looking for a job. Plus, the room was quite small and cramped, and I did not like that. So instead, I slept on the couch in the living room. Every time I went back home for a visit while I was at college and after I graduated, I ended up staying in the living room for a few months after I graduated living room became like my own room. Backing up a bit, whilst I was in college and would come back to visit my new home, most of the time I'd experience horrible nightmares after sleeping in the living room on that couch. This was so consistent and bad that I did some experimenting. I noticed that when I slept on the floor, this was something my father and I did in the past when we were little, pretended to camp on the floor, that there were no nightmares. Even when I slept on the floor next to the couch, no such nightmare should occur nor would they occur when I slept on another couch in the living room. Nor would I have any nightmares at my dorm or at college. It was only on this one couch in the living room under the window at that new home 
that I had these nightmares. And there were many, indeed. I would say more than half of the time, however, that they were deeply sad and grieving rather than terrifying. Now, there were some that were horrific. Never in all my life had I had such meaningful, symbolic, and horrific, depressing nightmares. Many times I'd wake up early in the morning in the wee hours of the morning automatically, and sometimes late at night I'd feel some presence. What was unsettling about these dreams were the impression that they, that they left on me. Some of them felt very real, and I remember them vividly, though I wish I did not. I'm sure all this sounds quite silly. At the time, I myself tried to brush it off as just something internal that was going through perhaps some sort of phase. I researched about nightmares and tried to approach the problem from a rationalistic perspective. My mind was just being creative and I needed to control it. I tried, like anyone else, to reason things away. Nevertheless, the nightmares did not stop. So finally, I remember one day when we went out to town, I asked my mother, do you know anything about the house or who previously owned it? I asked merely in a tone of curiosity, not wanting to make her think that I was bothered by something, but simply curious. She said, I don't know. I just know it was owned by someone before the last owners and before us. Throughout the three to four years of my college during visits back home, I probably asked this same question three to four times, and the answer was always the same. Of course, my reason for asking was because I wanted to know if something had happened in the house. Maybe some sort of bad lifestyle triggered some negative spiritual energy. After I graduated college, I moved into the new home, and as the days went on, the nightmares became worse and worse in content and in frequency. That did not occur every night. However, I was almost able to gauge when I would get up. Upon lying down on the couch and turning out the light, if I felt a presence around me, I knew with certainty there would be a nightmare. In that case, I would turn the light back on and find something to do to stay awake. If I did not feel some presence, I could take a chance and hope that there may be or not be a nightmare that night. Most of the time, though, I did feel some presence. This presence made me think of something unclean. It's hard to describe how I felt at the time. The nightmares and the presence were indeed scary, but I felt more annoyed than anything. Annoyed and tired. The nature of these nightmares was meaningful and symbolic. I'll share with you in brief a description of a few of the more serious ones. There were many more, but these stood out more. As best as I can remember, I'm telling these in order, and they span over a time of months of sleeping in the new home, from when I was in college and occasionally visited to after I had moved in the new home and stayed every night for months. One of the earliest dreams was of me lying on the couch and a little dog jumping on top of me while I slept. Except this little dog's head was, shake, was shaking amazingly fast and was like a blur. When I told my now ex-girlfriend about this, she seemed more scared of it than I was. Number two, the kitchen is attached to the living room. and You can see into the kitchen from where the couch is. In another dream, I saw a bodiless figure of clothes floating in a straight line from the back of the kitchen to where I was sleeping. This is the first dream I had that really started to scare me and get me thinking about the whole couch nightmare problem. Three, this one was in two parts, and this dream is the most bizarre and horrific dream I ever had my entire life. I've had some other horrific dreams before, but this surely is the worst. In the first part, I see a fairy come down through the kitchen window. This fairy had bright and glowing wings, but its body was all dark and creepy looking. But it flew down gracefully and landed in the window opening. It was probably the size of a large butterfly. When it landed, it transformed into a bigger female fairy sitting in the window. It's probably two or three feet tall and it looked more human-like. But it was very scrawny and long in its body. It was naked and I guess a little attractive. When I approached it, I poked, I poked its leg and it made some remark. Then, and this is where the dream turns dark, I notice a crow to my left, sitting in a cubby in the wall. My kitchen is basically a big rectangular room and the window was at one of the shorter sides of the rectangle. The opposite end was the opening into the house where the living room was. When I turn to my left, suddenly the whole wall opens and there are rows and rows of crows sitting on shelves in the living room and lining the walls. From floor to ceiling, wall to wall. Behind them is some bright white light. When I investigated the house itself, I saw also in the whole kitchen and living room there were crows everywhere. 
in the wall that's now to my left. After having turned around, the cabinet bursts open and some black substance pours out with black and white crows. And what looks like the demon from the movie Jeepers Creepers follows. When this happens, I quickly jump to the floor on the other side of the bar next to the wall lined with crows. I knew I did not want to be seen by this thing. The demon then begins to crawl on the floor around the bar in the middle of the kitchen, coming towards me. While I'm moving next to the wall of crows, I notice all the crows look at me in unison and turn their heads to wherever I am. Fortunately, around this point, I wake up. Later, I asked my Vietnamese friend what they thought the crows meant. They said in their culture, the crow is a symbol that death is coming. When I heard this, I felt like the energy had been drained from me. That seemed to match with a demon bursting out of the cabinet. I had other dreams about crows and about fairies, but never like that. Never that many crows. Never had they all looked at me. I never had a dream about some demonic creature until that one either. Many things about that dream were unique and very unsettling. Another weird thing, as a side note, after I had this dream, I went to my kitchen and I looked at the window and was just perplexed at what I dreamt and thought about it for a while. I noticed that in the window was a fake fairy-looking statue. I had never noticed it before until then. It is odd my dream correlated in this way. Number four, the following dream I typed up the day after I had it. This is a lot of symbolism and more to the dream, but in summary, I was stalked by a little girl in a gloomy house. From later research, I learned that demons often facade as a little girl. This did not help my worries. After I had this dream, I was getting quite tired of the nightmare, so I prayed to God for protection from whatever it was that was causing the nightmares. This seemed to stop the problem for a while, until I had another dream. These last dreams and events happened extremely near to each other, all within a few weeks. Number five, in this dream I see myself sleeping on the couch in the new home through the glass reflection in the fireplace. I had an electric fireplace. And I see something peeking from behind the couch. When it notices I see it, it quickly shrinks back behind the couch. After waking up from this, I was terrified and I did not sleep anymore. Before I had this dream, I noticed that the light would turn on or off by itself when I left the room to go to the bathroom. It would be on, and when I returned, it would be off, or vice versa. I'm certain this was not anyone else, because the only other person was my mother, who sometimes would be taking a nap when this type of thing would happen. Not to mention, I would be in the bathroom for just a minute, and since this happened more than once, I began to pay extra attention to it. The light was turning on, off, on its own. But always... When I was gone, my mother and I were the only two people in the house. One day, not too long after this dream, it was cold, so I moved the couch. I slept on the front of the electric fireplace to keep warm. This meant I had to move the couch a whole 90 degrees and slide it forward a few feet. This completely exposed the wall and window where it was in front of, where I saw the thing peeking from behind the dream. I thought about that as I moved the couch and wondered if I'd find something under the couch, but of course... Nothing at all was there. It was just the wall, the floor, and the window above. The fireplace works by pressing on a button, then by pressing two different buttons. One controls the lighting effects, the other controls the actual heat. There are four levels for each button. When you first press either button, it starts on the highest level. So, to reach the lowest level, you'd have to press the on button, then the other button three times. The lowest setting was where I had it. I was awake for a while and then finally decided I had to sleep. I was so tired. But before I slept, I turned off the fireplace. I'm 100% certain I did this because I did not want to cook myself while I slept. And because I told myself, all right, I turned it off. So if it is on when I wake up, I know for certain there is some demon or ghost playing with me. And that's where we're going to pause the preview portion of this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you want to hear the rest of this story, and it is compelling, and it's going to make you afraid of your furniture. <laughs> it will. It really will. Uh, become an EPP, an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. $5 a month will get you access to all of our bonus episodes, all 360 of them now, as well as our advanced episodes of the show, all of it's commercial free and the full archive, which is huge. It's filled with thousands of episodes. Quite literally, the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories is what you get there. 
It's five bucks a month. Sign up either at ghostpodcast.com or if you prefer the Patreon route, great platform there, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Thank you for your support. Thank you.